this next comment question comes from the Death Beats in response to how did you find the PG800 programmer? A video I did um, in da -da -da, January 2022. Uh, and Gary writes, crazy that I actually did release the JX8P boutique since I left that comment. I've been a little unsure about buying the JX08, as you know, but more I look at the demos, the more I want one. I think it's probably inve inevitable that I will add it to my collection. <laughs> it's the hand. The hand is, is, is moving towards the credit card. The hand is moving towards the credit card. Um, I just thought of another negative in regards to the membrane buttons. On my Alpha Juno 2, um, they have a slight tear in them, which is, is how it came when I bought it on eBay in 20, uh, 2002. That always has annoyed me. In addition to the unit being very difficult to program, I'd often start a studio session and feel very motivated to dig into the Alpha Juno. But after a few minutes of struggling, <laughs> I would usually jump back to the JX3P, uh, which is underrated rave monster. And I do actually have Gary's JX83P uh, in storage. Uh, for some restoration work that uh, I've agreed that we would, I would do on it. Uh, anyway, I wrote back and said, I bet it's warmer on your side of the pond than it is here, knowing that he's out in Mexico at the moment. I moved the uh, synth bucket list uh, to the Roland. Uh, I moved the synth bucket list to the Roland JX10, but I think the more I think about the JX08, I think the more I think this might be a good hardware solution to this problem. Um, the thing about the sound modules is they're very, very portable. And it's really true, they are very portable. It is something I've come to realize over the last year during lockdown, when I've had to have all my uh, instruments in storage, which is what I do have to do, you know, given my living circum circumstances the last few years. And I'm not complaining about my living circumstances because I actually like living here. Um, but it does mean I can't have all my um, instruments set up as I would normally have them set up uh, before I moved here. Uh, but, but. Um, so I can only, I can have a few sound modules here because they're quite compact and I can actually have several sound modules on the on the bench in front of me if I was out here working um, rather than you know one keyboard if you like or one keyboard and several modules or whatever happens to be. But back to the rave monster. <laughs> um, what I've seen uh, really is many keyboards come up for sale with torn or damaged membranes, um, and I know that unless you can find a keyboard that is being broken for spares. Re repairing the membrane is something that's very difficult. There is a company out in Poland called Analog, Analog.pl um, and they can do this stuff but it is not cheap. Okay. Um, but we'll see what happens. I mean I, I tend to steer clear of anything I see with membrane problems because it's just not worth the aggro of trying to repair it. Um, anyway, Gary writes back and says, you know what, mate, it gets very cold here in the north at this time of year. We've had an ice storm with temperatures of minus 10 and several inches. This is Mexico, for God's sake. Um, I ended up in hospital getting shots for, cold, for the cold affecting my nerves and in my face. I kid you not, for the next couple of months, I'll be sitting at my desk with a hot water bowl. Mm. I tried the PG8 VST yesterday, which sounds nice and fat, and to be honest, I think it assuaged me from wanting the JX08. That being said, I don't think anything could put me off a boutique Alpha Juno 2 or a JP8000. Um, Behringer have released a module or an image of a JP8000 um, that they are intending to put in production. But Gary, maybe that's the way you're going to head with your with your purchases. And you're right about the storage. It isn't. It is great to be able to simply arrange the boutiques on a shelf. Hmm. Oh well. I suppose that you don't think of somewhere closer to the equator being colder, uh, but Mexico City is at altitude. Uh, make sure the water bottle has a fluffy case, um, as a hard-nosed EDM producers need fluffy, uh, need the fluffy side. <laughs> After all, I have a sheep and a bear, and anybody who's watched my Instagram account will know I have a sheep and a bear, and normally the sheep or the bear is floating around behind me, but they're not today. Um, I can really see the JP8000 being a potential for the next release. A sound module being one for the big keyboards, many uh, of your peers in the creation of EDM. 
Personally, I've just had a look at the PGA. I did have a look at the VSD, and I downloaded it and gave it a whirl. Um, the the plugin for the the manual for the plugin is well written. Explains how each part of the PGA 800 programmer works, and in fact, to be honest, is better than the Roland manual that it tries to emulate. So, you know, but that's really not difficult because, as many people know, Roland manuals at this point in time were written by Geek for Geek. Um, they weren't written really for the end user. Anyway, remember, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go over to Instagram and follow me there. Go over to Facebook, follow me there. That's where the normal notices are. And consider becoming a Patreon. Next um, comment, strike question comes from uh, Abel. And this is in response to the death of the Cronus video I did in December 2021. And Abel writes, the Nautilus is more of a transitional keyboard. It's like what Roland did when they bought out the Phantom G or the FA series. They discontinued the Phantom G series and brought out the FA until the new Phantom synth was available. They wanted to maintain a place in the market so Nautilus becomes a sort of transitional uh, keyboard while they either release a new flagship synth or finish working on it. Korg stated, or sorry, Korg started the workstation concept back in 1988 with the M1, so I doubt they want to move away from it and they will probably improve the concept of a workstation with more sound engines, more storage space, door integration and other stuff. Or like Roland, focus on synthesizer aspects of a workstation and create something like a Phantom. My best guess is that after this, the Chrome will be completely replaced by the Nautilus and Korg will have a new flagship at least before the end of 2023. Your thoughts? My thoughts indeed. Um, it's probably a good way to look at the Nautilus as a transitional um, instrument. Uh, I think the basics of the new workstation have already kind of been defined. I suspect there's a prototype in the Skunk Works but it can't hurt to tell Korg what the customer actually wants from a new machine. But I do agree that we won't see anything in 2022. In fact, I've been resigned to the fact that we won't see very many new breaking ground synthesizers in 2022, purely because of uh, issues related with COVID and supply chain. Um, but I do expect towards the end of this year um, and into next year, marketing to start ramping up to the launches of new machines. We're waiting for new machines from a number of manufacturers that have been kind of showcased, have gone out to the influencers, but have yet to hit the shelves in the retailers.